are you terrified by these high interest rates? Don't you wish you'd be able to get interest rates that are half that, what they are today? Well, with these two words, I'm gonna share with you the secret for how you get interest rates that are way below the marketplace. Come on, let me show you how. Wouldn't you like to go back to 2020 when the interest rates were half what they are today and be able to buy as much real estate as you wanted? Well, there are two secret words I wanna share with you today. The two most valuable words for investors if you wanna have really low interest rates. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hide these from you because you're gonna hear these words a lot but maybe not know what they really mean, subject to. Subject to financing is the secret to invest with no money down. It allows you to avoid having to qualify for conventional loans to get in the game faster with little or no hassle. Now, just think about how many millions of loans are out there right now with two, three, three and a half percent interest rates. And can you, can you qualify for those loans? Can you get those loans in your name? Well, remember, we were looking for highly motivated sellers who bought back then, had those low, low interest rates on those mortgages, and you want to buy those properties subject to your ability to make their payments for them. And of course, it requires a little bit of trust between both of you. They've got to realize that you're taking over their obligation, but they're not refinancing. You're not going to the bank and qualifying for all these credible loans, especially at 7.2% or 7.5%. You're going to assume or assume the obligation to make the monthly payments for somebody else's loan they already took out. So this is a really important point for you to think about. This is subject to. Subject to what? Subject to the existing financial agreement, the loan that's already in place with those low monthly payments, you want to buy the property subject to being able to make those low monthly payments, right? So one way to use subject to in a deal is to assume ownership of the property, real estate, vehicle, equipment, etc., while the loan stays in the name of the original borrower. Now, does the bank like this? No, because in the mortgage, there's a clause in there. It's called the due on sale clause. And therefore, the bank wants a new borrower to come in and qualify all over again. And therefore, they're not happy when somebody else takes over the monthly payments. And they, they, they're not happy about it. So there are some ways to solve this legally. I want you to know that. It's just first you need to understand that you're not really putting your name in that mortgage you're basically leaving the mortgage the way it was. The mortgage they got several years ago might have been five, six, eight years ago, and they've been making monthly payments on it. You get the benefit of all that equity buildup because the more that loan is in existence, the faster the equity is built up. So you want to find an existing loan like that owned by a highly motivated seller who is willing to allow you to continue to make their monthly payments for them. So to summarize, you're taking over somebody's older loan that they took out maybe years ago. You're assuming their monthly payments at a much lower interest rate without the bank knowing about it. The reason you don't hear too much about this is because realtors won't tell you about it. They want you to go get a brand new loan and have a no, the due on sale clause is not part of the conversation. But you're looking for highly motivated sellers. You're looking for one in 20. And so the realtors are dealing with 19 out of the 20. You want that one who is so desperate to get rid of that property that they're willing to do kind of unconventional things. And where do you find people like that? Well, you can find them in probate sales. You can find them in notice of defaults because that lets you know that they're in serious trouble. People who, uh, your personal networking, whenever you go to a party, you're going to tell people you buy real estate. And if they can find a deal for you, tell me about it, right? And of course, foreclosures. These let you know that people are really, they really need to sell. And therefore, doing things that are a little unconventional makes, le makes more sense to them because they really don't want it. They just want to get rid of it as fast as they possibly can. So remember, if you're talking to a realtor about this, they're going to go, oh, ah. but we're not talking to a lot of realtors. We don't want to buy properties that, before they get to the realtor, right? 
For example, you probably want to know how does this really work. Suppose there's a $300,000 house that you're interested in. Now, if you were to buy this today, what would it take? As an investor, you'd have to put 20% down, which is $60,000. There'll be some closing costs, probably $10,000. Why? Well, because if you're getting a conventional loan, they're going to require that kind of down payment. They're going to require you to have all kinds of extra costs associated to it. So this, the closing costs are higher when you get a conventional loan. The interest rate today, 7.2% as of November 2022. The monthly payment on that, 1629 bucks a month. And don't you wish you had been able to buy that when the interest rates were dramatically lower? Well, maybe you still can. Maybe you don't buy it in a traditional way, you know, through the realtor where you have to put 20% down and get a brand new conventional a horrible loan. I don't like to get conventional loans. They're just hard to get. They're hard to qualify for. You have the great interest rate, income, you know. I don't like rejection to you. So I'd rather find a highly motivated seller. Someone who has a property that they, maybe it's the same property, but they have had, they've had some problems. And you know, they do have some equity in it. But Maybe they're behind in their payments. Maybe they've got a, some, some sickness. Maybe they, they need to move to another property. Maybe they'd be willing to take maybe only $10,000 down. And what if we could get that same property for $10,000 down and then assuming the monthly payments on their existing, older existing loan? So the closing costs would be a lot lower because we don't have to go to a bank and a, uh, or a mortgage company where the closing costs will be much higher. The interest rate, hey, it's the loan they had two years ago. It's 3.3% as of two years ago. So their monthly payments that they're, they're walking away from is 1,051. See the difference between those two? 1629 versus 1,051. That's 600 bucks a month that you get to put in your pocket because you're buying it from a highly motivated seller subject to subject to you continuing to make the existing payment they've been making for the last couple of years. Now, most traditional real estate agents or people who are selling property today, they're not willing to do this. They're not willing to allow you to take over their monthly payments. They want to be off. They want to be out. They want to be gone. But that's why we always look for highly motivated sellers. And there are some secret techniques for how you hide your monthly payment to the bank so that the due on sale clause is not activated. And so you can continue to make that payment until it's paid off. So I'll share with you how to do that in this next slide. So I'm not an attorney. And so I'm not going to give you legal advice on how to do this. You're going to go online, you do some research on how to avoid the due on sale clause. But I'm going to give you a couple of examples that I know some friends of mine that do very, very successfully. So you need to put the property into an entity, some kind of a legal entity that gives you a little um, distance between you and the owner. For example, uh, you might set up a trust, a trust where the, se the seller now has their property in the trust and therefore you buy the trust from them. And therefore as a new owner of the trust, you continue to make monthly payments on their existing financing and there have been a lot of legal cases where the banks cannot uh, accelerate the due on sale clause because of that. There might be other entities that your, uh, your attorney will tell you about. Uh, maybe it's uh, an LLC or some other, because I'm not an attorney, so I don't want to go there, except to let you know that if you do some deeper research on it, you can find very legitimate ways, legally, totally honest, where you can continue to make the payments on this fantastic older loan so you can put more money in your pocket. So you'll notice I use the word trust. A trust is a legal entity where you put some documents in there to kind of protect yourself. But trust is also what is needed to, in the negotiation. The seller needs to know that they can trust you, that you'll continue to make the monthly payments, maybe on their good credit, until that loan is finally paid off. And so when you're negotiating with somebody, it's got to be a win-win attitude right from the very beginning. Because if they don't feel like can, they can trust you with this little highly creative way of assuming their, their mortgage payments, then, they will, then they'll say no. They'll say, no, you need to refinance it, get my name off there. So 
you need to make a decision in your mind. You would never take advantage of this seller. You will follow through on your, on your promise to them and, until you've fulfilled your promise. You can't walk away from it. You give your word. And if you do, they'll trust you if, you, if they really believe you think that. But if they think you're, you're trying to just take advantage of them because they're in a financial circumstances uh, that are not so positive for them, then they'll probably walk away from it. Build trust, it's really extremely important. Now, remember, one of the pitfalls of doing this technique, the beware of the due on sale clause, subject to deals require unique circumstances and high levels of trust between the parties to work. But it's worth it. It's worth for you to figure it out. Cut your payments in half? Hey, figure that out. Find a highly motivated seller and negotiate with trust. Scale up means don't just do one of them. Every single property you buy from now on should be with an older existing lower interest rate loan. Remember, the only limiting factor for subject to deals is your own creativity. Because each deal is unique, it will take some time to build trust and structure the deal that is agreeable to both parties, but it is time well spent. This is where you put more money in your pocket. Anybody can do this especially when you get a copy of this book, which teaches you how to find those highly motivated sellers I just was talking about. Get this book, study it, and it'll show you how you can create a fortune in your real estate investing, especially now. So click on this link and get your free copy of the challenge book today. Thanks for watching. Click on the link down below in order to subscribe so you can watch more of this great stuff and then watch the next video.